Sirius, what was said, that forever changed your relationship with someone? Sirius replies only. You slash Billimuk actually responded. My father said yes I know and I don't support you. I will never forget those words, when I told him that I filed a police report on the man who molested me as a child. He didn't even look like the same man to me the next time I saw him. You slash sweetheart and sin responded. My mom was dying. A friend told me you have your whole life to freak out about this don't do it in front of her. It really helped me to understand that my feelings are not always what's important. It is possible to delay a freak out, and that skill has served me innumerable times. You slash sugar free delivery responded. I was 13 years old, trying to teach my 6 year old sister how to dive into a swimming pool from the side of the pool. It was taking quite a while as my sister was really nervous about it. We were at a big, public pool, and nearby there was a woman, about 75 years old, slowly swimming laps. Occasionally she would stop and watch us. Finally she swam over to us just when I was really putting the pressure on, trying to get my sister to try the dive, and my sister was shouting, but I'm afraid. I'm so afraid. The old woman looked at my sister, raised her fist defiantly in the air and said, so be afraid, and then do it anyway. That was 35 years ago and I have never forgotten it. It was a revelation it's not about being unafraid. It's about being afraid and doing it anyway. You slash Maddie 2435 responded. My dad had recently committed suicide a week before Christmas. There were no signs he was going to do this. It was totally a blindside. I decided to still do spring break in March, with my three best friends at my mom's beach house to relax and get away. My best friend started breakfast one morning by asking if I saw any signs my dad was gonna commit suicide. I said no and my boyfriend, now husband, who came along agreed that he was always happy and it was out of the blue. She said to me verbatim there were definitely signs, you just missed them. If you would have paid attention your dad would still be here. It's technically your fault. After we all got home I immediately cut her off, she wasn't invited to my wedding let alone as a bridesmaid anymore that upcoming October and I blocked her on everything. Three years and a lot of anxiety drugs later and that comment still fucks me up edit. Did not realize this would get so popular. If anyone you know has done this and you feel like you I missed the signs, don't. It is not your fault. You loved them the best you could, and they still love you, wherever they are now in this cosmic crazy universe. Live life to your fullest so when you meet again you can give them the most hella updates on what happened. You slash primary underscore atmosphere underscore three responded. My mother telling me that being raped at 15 years old was my own fault, and then half an hour later proceeding to full-on cry over a new segment about a woman on a mine site being sexually assaulted as she was walking back to her room, and wail to my father about how awful and tragic it was. And then my father telling her to keep her voice down so I didn't hear it and start ranting again about what happened to me and how it wasn't my fault because he couldn't be bothered having to listen to it anymore. Yeah fuck those cunts. I won't even be going to their funerals. You slash sixage responded. When I was 10 or 11, my parents had brought us to get some clothes from the thrift store. We didn't have much money so hardly bought new clothes. Most of my clothes LD wear until there were holes or they didn't fit. My dad brought over some pants in the size I had been previously. He was angry and frustrated since it was late and he didn't want to be out. When I said they didn't fit, he told me that you've gotten fat before storming off. I started middle school worrying about my weight and defaulted to an eating disorder. I even now still have issues with my weight and self-worth because of it. You slash cancer four fighter responded. Had a DR tell me, three inches from my face, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. He seemed livid that I was wasting his time. Never ran a single test. Then recommended a psychiatrist. Once I finally found a new doctor he found that I have late stage cancer. Could have been caught much earlier if the first drive listened. Also, had a friend tell me that she had already grieved my impending death so that's why I haven't seen or heard from her most of my cancer battle. I was already dead to her. I have no trust in anyone at this point. You slash two scar hand responded. I was barely holding it together as I was talking to my dad about how LD be having to make some calls to the bank because there were thousands of dollars missing from my account. And he just casually says, yeah, that was me. He decided, without asking, to use my money to pay for household expenses, like changing the tires on the car. Thousands of dollars gone. Just thinking about now it puts me in the mindset of a desperate man with nothing left to lose. The reason I didn't pursue legal action was because LD be spending thousands more just to send him to prison. Instead I moved out ASAP and haven't seen or spoken to him since. 
You slash underscore caps 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 underscore responded. When I told my ex-husband that had been struggling with thoughts of killing myself, he replied all I heard you just say is that you'd rather be dead than be with me. Way to make it all about yourself, buddy. Thanks. ETA. He said this while we were arguing about him banging somebody at work so while I wish it was said from a place of shock or fear, it was not. I was trying to open up about why LD been so withdrawn lately because he kept saying that was why he was doing it, I had been afraid of telling him because I thought he would judge me. You slash nonconformist Fimingo responded. My therapist said LVE only been friends with you for so long because it's convenient. I don't have to try to make other friends or get out of my comfort zone. But other than that we aren't really friends anymore. I think she might be right. Said to me by my best friend of 20 years. He was like an older brother to me. We were so close that we would have crazy ESP moments of texting each other the same thing at the exact same time. We just knew each other that well. He was my platonic soulmate. It's been four years since he told me that. Four years since we last spoke. I just can't seem to heal this one. You slash BBSBSB Shah responded. I let it slip at a doctor's office that I was feeling hopeless and down for weeks prior, but I lied and said that it was because of the news when in actuality, I wanted to attend God's meet and greet. I lied because I saw that my mom was glaring at me and shaking her head as if to say no you haven't. She got all mad and stormed out and yelled at me in the car do you know how this makes me look at a mother? Was 13. That's when I realized my mother never cared about her kid. Only appearances. And so I appeared to love and care about her for the coming years. You slash Hameltrash 1232 responded. My grandmother's dog died and I went to her house to comfort her. We'd always been very close so I stayed for a while even though we had been fighting quite a lot. Well, I went over there and she cried while I comforted her. But then that's when she said something that still sticks in my head. She told me why couldn't something happen to you instead. And walked away. I immediately went back home and stopped all contact with her for a few weeks. She still denies saying that. You slash tap environmental 9768 responded. When my friend told me she knows. A few months after my mom died I was talking with a good friend, both 38 at the time. I was my mom's primary caregiver. I was reflecting on how hard it was at times. I mentioned helping my mom with medicines and my friend said I know, my name. I began spewing what my mom and I went through and she really listened. I realized without having gone through this herself, she understood completely. We've been friends since third grade. The type of friends that pick up where we left off. That last, empathetic I know, my name, hit my heart something fierce. We've been so much closer since then. You slash water underscore adone responded. She told me that her way of grieving the passing of her cat was the buy a kitten. Bringing the total number of cats back up to six. The only difference now is that the new cat would be the only one not infected with the contagious deadly disease that killed the first one. She lives in her home with her four dogs, cats, and a dozen other caged animals but has no one to hang out with because she prioritized that kitten over our 10-year friendship. You slash well underscore this underscore blows responded. We're both too angry and hungry to keep this conversation going. Let's drop it for now, get some food, and relax. I'll cook if you do the dishes. She taught me some valuable rules for arguments. Never argue right after work or coming home, never argue when you're dehydrated or hungry, and never start an argument if you're not willing to compromise. She's an amazing woman who helped me so much when I was younger. She still supports me, and we even play D&D together with her wife. I can't wait to see her next year. You slash Ophelia Rain Galaxy responded. You're a bitch just like your mother. Like a decade later dad asked for permission to attend mom's funeral. They'd been divorced for 15 years and he'd spent the entire time saying worse than that about her on a regular basis. But when he asked, that's what rang through my mind, so I said no. So around 15 years later, I'm in my mid-30s and dad is begging me to come be his medical proxy in the hospital, make decisions for him in his final days like I did for my mother. After talking it over with the kindest and most empathetic person LVE ever known, I broke NC for the first time in years to ask if he needed me to pull the plug for him. Because my friend was right, it'd be wrong of me to leave a rabid dog hooked up to machines experiencing a lingering painful death, no matter how much it hurt me in the past. You slash ect 5 responded. My extremely jealous ex-wife had a mental breakdown when I wouldn't give her the reassurance she demanded that I wasn't having an affair, this had gone on for years. I spent 20 minutes thinking, I'm going to have to have her committed, before she finally calmed down. She fell asleep and I went to sleep on the couch, but was so unsettled and worried she might try something that I was up most of the night. Things were never the same for me after that, 
and I brought it up about a year later to show her how unstable our marriage was when she apparently thought everything was fine. I told her, I didn't sleep because I was afraid you might come and stab me to death. Expected her to be dismissive or even laugh. Instead all she said was, yeah, that was a really bad night. You slash Kalebfi responded. Guy I was friends with was hanging out at my place when my little sister, 10 at the time he was 14 and I was 15, walked in and asked me for something, I don't remember what, and he said something rude like go away kid or some shit and she threw shade back saying maybe you could leave you tub of lard, he was fat, and then he immediately said go away before I use a dildo on you and I looked at him with disgust and it took me all of my willpower not to clock him and throw him outside and I just told him to leave immediately blocked him everywhere and told all of our mutuals what happened. You slash Arias K responded. I live in New Zealand. We have a complicated history when it comes to speaking T Rio Maori, native language, in this country. For a long time Maori weren't allowed to speak their own language and would literally be beaten at school etc for it. Now there's a huge push to bring it back. There's a lot of tension around it, especially between old white people and pretty much everyone else. People are so blatantly racist and don't realize it. They'll refuse to pronounce Maori names and words correctly, even when told over and over again. This especially applies to place names, even the word Maori itself. I digress. A close family friend died when she was only 19. Her mother is Maori. At the funeral, her maternal grandfather spoke in Maori. My grandmother, who was standing next to me, leaned closer and whispered in my ear, in an aggressive tone speak English. She was literally angry that a man was speaking his own language at his own granddaughter's funeral. In that moment I lost all respect for my grandmother. You slash Kerbis responded. When I told the person who sexually assaulted me that they did not have my consent and that what had happened led to me nearly killing myself a couple months later, they replied, why do you put yourself in dangerous situations? I mean, I was stupid to think that telling them what they did would matter, there were dozens of signs that this person was unsafe and unhealthy for me, but by God did that feel like a slap to the face more than anything else. Really knocked the sense into me and I cut them off after that. On a more positive note, anytime anyone has ever earnestly said I'm sorry to me. My dad apologizing for not protecting me against emotional abuse I endured from a relative growing up, my grandmother apologizing for rejecting me for being queer and coming around to accept me, etc. A genuine sorry does actually change the relationship forever, and for the better. But they have to actually mean it. You slash foreign underscore fall underscore 8266 responded. My ex passed away, leaving me to raise my two kids, who both had disabilities alone. Instead of dealing with the trauma, I drank always dumped my kids on my mum to go drink this happened for a few months before my nana invite me over to house to have a chat. She told me I had to stop running from my pain because I had to go through to get through it, my nan lost her adult child 20 years ago. What do you know she was right I stopped avoiding everyone including the kids stopped drinking all the time and she was there for me without judgement and I honestly don't know if LD be here if it wasn't for her. You slash deleted responded I've been through worse after the worst thing in my life happened to me. This was right after we had gotten married and no, he had not. We're still married five years later but I fell out of love with him a lot that day. Not doing great by any means and I still think about that a lot. You slash emergency twist 7136 replied to this comment to say. We're still married five years later. Why though? Not for nothing. But generally speaking when people tell me about something bad happening to them, I have been through worse. And I do not say that. I do not mention it or hint at it. I've had people who knew about the worst things try to downplay their issues and be like I know it's nothing on event but. And I always tell them that that's irrelevant. If I have a broken leg and you stub your toe, my broken leg doesn't make your toe not hurt. Maybe if these events happen at the same time then yeah, you can suck it up about your toe at least until LVE successfully been relocated to a hospital but that's as much as those things affect each other. As I'm not a piece of shit I am happy to offer comfort to my friends and family regardless of whether LVE had worse experiences. Thank you for watching. If you like this video you might enjoy the rest of my content check it out.